so without further ado, um, we have the pleasure this morning of having um, Mayor John Tory, our mayor here in the city of Toronto, to uh, open with a few words of welcome and a little bit about uh, our great city music program here in your host city. So please welcome Mayor John Tory. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, congratulations on making it out. In my case, I was a bit late because I took a wrong turn at the top of the escalator and ended up at the cannabis uh, conference. <laughs> so it got me a bit tied up, and I apologize for that. And I, I was at the awards ceremony last night for the music industry and the broadcasters, and uh, I was going to wear my Rush t-shirt again today. I, I, I told the story last night, so forgive me those who were there, that I was at Gary Slate's lunch yesterday honoring uh, some of the great artist that uh, his uh, foundation supports, and uh, he comes up to me as only Gary could. Those of you who know Gary will know this is a pretty good invitation and says, what are you wearing tonight? And I said, well, I was planning to wear what I had on, it was a suit. And he said, you can't wear that, you gotta have a Rush t-shirt. So I got a Rush t-shirt and wore the Rush t-shirt last night with my suit. And then he shows up in some sort of plain, ordinary black shirt, and I didn't know how that was. But I was gonna wear the Rush shirt again today, but then there'd be some note taken somewhere that the guy wears the same clothes two days in a row, and generally isn't very sanitary. So between that and the cannabis conference. So um, in any event, uh, I just wanna say at the outset to Neil, who I think is still here, uh, thank you for what I know is going to be another very successful CMW and it's something we're proud to have here in Toronto and uh, as he said, Amy is a, a steadfast a person that we see a lot of at the City Hall as we try to do, um, you know, what we're trying to do which is to make sure that uh, the music industry is no stranger to the City Hall and vice versa because I think only then can we really make progress on what we're trying to do which is to make sure, first of all, of course, that music is completely integrated into every aspect of the fabric of, of city life um, secondly, that we're growing an industry that's already big and important, but making it big, more, you know, bigger and more important. Um, and thirdly, that it plays the full role that it can play um, in kind of knitting together the most diverse city in the world. I made some reference to this last night, that you know, music is that kind of universal, one of those very few universal languages. Um, in honoring Rush last night, I said, you know, two people from in Toronto, and this can easily happen, as you know, can be sitting, listening to Rush perform, or just listening to Rush music, or anybody else's music, and they can't speak to each other, because in Toronto there are going to be people who don't speak uh, the most common language of English or French, um, and, and, and they each speak their own language, so they can't really talk to each other, but they can sit there and experience music together. And so that's one of the reasons I believe music and the arts are hugely important, even more so here, given the diversity of the city, which as you know is a diversity on a scale that is not surpassed anywhere else uh, in the world. Um, I don't know if he's come in yet, but I know Josh Cole's on his way here, uh, our city councillor, and I just want you to know how fortunate I am, uh, we all are, to have him uh, as an advocate uh, in this area, uh, uh, you know, that uh, that is chairing the Music Advisory Council, and beyond whatever he's chairing or not chairing, because he also has the misfortune that uh, we asked him to do to chair the TTC. When I say that, it's just because it's one of those no-win propositions where no matter how much we're trying to improve transit, it's never good enough, and that's a, that's a good motivator. But uh, he's doing a great job advocating for uh, music, and um, it is something that I think is necessary. You know, at City Hall, like at any business that you're a part of, or even in somebody's own you know, life as an individual artist, um, there are pushes and pulls that cause you to focus on things Monday that you weren't focusing on Wednesday. And Josh is helping us to keep a focus on music every day at the City Hall and many aspects of city life, because that's the only way we're going to move the industry and the status of music forward. Uh, in the city. So um, I would say start off by saying, because I think one of the things that uh, you know um, might be expected of me is to sort of you know offer my own assessment as to how things are for music. And, I, and I'll say this, and this is not critical of the media or critical of or diminishing of the fact that there's been some venues lost and a couple of things happened that weren't necessarily uh, by any stretch of the imagination good news. But I really believe from where I sit, from what I know, and I don't profess to be an expert in this, that the state of music in Toronto is actually really good um, and is a subject for considerable bullishness when it comes to the future. Um, yes, uh, we have you know, lost some, uh, some venues. I would point out at the same time as somebody were asking me about this that there are others that are reopening, new ones that are opening. I was proud to be at the announcement the other day of Universal's new 
um, office in Toronto, but of course it's much more than an office. And I think it's the way of the future where we're going to have an office for Universal to have all of their uh, business done. Uh, it's going to be in downtown Toronto, but it's also going to have a recording studio and it's also going to be a performance space, both of which are going to be open to people who are not Universal artists. And both, of the, and all of which is now surrounded that particular complex by a lot of innovative uh, companies that are into all manner of digital, um, you know, uh, work, but uh, including in the music uh, and entertainment business. So, um, and I think if you add that to the fact that we are sort of internationally seen uh, because of some of the success of our artists as being a place that is a home to among some of the top artists in the world, um, you know, whether you're talking about. Sean Mendes, Alicia Cara, Drake, Weekend, Strumbellas, I mean, the list goes on. And I think this has firmly established us as a place that is both committed to music and is a fertile, you know, development ground for the musicians that are going to be the global uh, stars of the future. And, um, you know, this is nothing new. Again, we're inclined to sort of treat this sometimes the way we write it up or the way we talk about it as a, a brand new phenomenon that would have Toronto musicians, um, you know, receiving global um, accolades, and if you go back to sort of Oscar Peterson, Glenn Gould, Gordon Lightfoot, uh, you know, uh, Maestro Fresh West, uh, then you could go on on a list of people who again have global renown for a number of different things related to the music uh, industry. And uh, I think you'd see this as something that what we're trying to do is build on a great tradition and make sure that it's just a continuing tradition that doesn't in some way peter out with the current generation of, uh, of uh, accomplished musicians. Um, we've also got more live shows happening than probably any other place uh, on any given day in Toronto than any other place in North America. And that's a fact. And again, it's no reason for complacency, and it's not meant on my part to indicate that there isn't concern about some of the things that happen from time to time that we've got to keep our eye on. But I think any opening of Now Magazine or a look at Blog TO, and you will see that we have a very healthy and robust uh, music uh, um, sector going on here. And that does include venues. Again, um, there are some losses that are always sad of uh, institutions that have been around for a long time, but they tend to be offset, uh, I hope in all cases, and maybe even exceeded by the good news that's coming. Uh, Baby G opened last year on Dundas West, and it's now a mainstay of the live music scene. Uh, the Hideout did close on Queen West, but then reopened the College in Bathurst. Um, older buildings are being revamped uh, as better live music venues like uh, the, the Great Hall in Queen West, Massey Hall, and so on. The El Elmo, of course, is going to reopen again very shortly. Um, and then we've got more festivals than ever. I'm hearing the number might now be approaching 70. Uh, and again, this is a sign, I think, of, of good health. Uh, and they're not any longer confined to the summer. And I think this is a good thing, too, as we stretch out. Uh, and you'll hear one of the ideas that we have as a priority for this year is something that's meant to kind of do what has been done successfully with other things, and that is to stretch um, the attention to music and the festival environment to uh, times of the year when it seems less likely. So I'm looking forward to the Jazz Festival, to North By. Um, these have been happening for more than 20 years in the city, and I think all of this is good news. Now, it isn't all uh, sweetness and light. Like every aspect of business or government, there are always issues uh, that are um, you know, sometimes a result of a successful city um, and a growing city, but other times just a result as a result of business conditions. But on the successful and growing city side, I think we've seen some of the pressures either now building in or that have been building in for the last number of years here that have been experienced by New York and by San Francisco and London and even Austin um, facing some of these issues. Um, and they're, um, you know, they're byproducts of growth and success, the real estate pressures that have impacted upon not just the music venue business, but many, many other businesses, especially smaller ones that don't have a lot of money to sort of kick around to suddenly pay uh, big rent increases. Um, it is something that is being faced by Toronto now as a byproduct of our success, and we have to find ways, as I think we're doing, uh, to deal with that, and we've tried to take some steps to help. Let me just talk to you briefly, and then I'll conclude on this uh, with, with, uh, with some points we're going to focus on in 2017. Um, we've been trying to do things in 15 and 16, uh, since I took office and since we sort of had this renewed focus on music. And the first thing we started with was trying to bring the music industry into the City Hall. Because I think before it was fair to say that not just the music industry, but a number of these industries that are so integral to the success and, and to the vitality of the soul of the city were you know, operating in relative isolation. Only when there was some kind of a crisis would somebody be end up in the City Hall uh, to sort of say, we have a terrible problem here and um, you know, what can you do to help us with it? 
I think the connection that we have uh, forged or are beginning to forge um, is bearing fruit. I think it has proven that when we engage in a, con a constant dialogue uh, with the music industry that we can address before they become huge problems, sometimes smaller things, but smaller things that make a big difference. So we did amend the poster even by law so that venues are no longer fined for posters that they didn't put up. Um, we are playing, and it's a small thing, but I think these things all add up, and they're not all new ideas that came from Toronto. We are now playing when people are on hold on 311. Uh, Toronto artists uh, are featured there in terms of the music that has been playing. We are creating a music loading and unloading zones, uh, starting with the Danforth Music Hall, and we're now looking at other venues as we learn um, from what we have to do in order to make it possible and practical and, and more comfortable for our musicians and artists and, and, uh, and acts to load and unload in front of uh, some of the venues. Uh, we've created a new permit, a new category of permit, music in the parks, um, specifically to make sure that it was easier for, uh, for different acts to play in the parks. Whereas before there was a scenario that I've described before where we had of all things, that most intrusive of all festivals, an acoustic guitar festival that was sort of deemed by some to be uh, some kind of a nuisance when in fact you'd be lucky, um, you know, to be, uh, to, to, to hear the music if you were lucky enough to live by, but you'd be lucky to be disturbed by it because it isn't anything that's disturbing. But we've now at least got a system in place that specifically positively contemplates uh, music in the parks. And I should tell you that um, the musical, uh, the um, arts uh, event that I re, uh, re uh, instated where the mayor has an evening for the arts to raise money for the arts, that money has all, uh, for the first two years of its existence, and we're talking about a million dollars plus raised in each of those two evenings, uh, been put into putting art into the parks. And the arts has included a great deal of music and dance and other things, but a lot of music into the parks. Um, we had a sponsor, one of the things we were told was that a lot of smaller independent acts didn't have access to the sponsorship dollars that existed in a, in, in a group of sort of corporate and other kinds of patrons that they didn't have access to. So we had a sponsorship roundtable and brought those people together. Musicians, independent musicians with sponsors, and it wasn't so much to say, can you write me a check, although there was some of that discussion that took place. It was also to say, well, how do you go about getting those dollars? What are we looking for? Um, how can you connect yourself up to these companies that have demonstrated an interest in music? So this is all a start, and we know the fact that it is just a start, and we have to keep working at it year after year. And so that's why I wanted to just mention the things we're going to be focused on in 2017, and we're already focused on them because it's already uh, almost May. First of all, uh, number one, we want more music events led by the city. So if we can put on a, uh, a um, if we can put on a showcase in Austin at South by that uh, you know features Toronto artists, then we can do more at home uh, to feature those very same. At Toronto artists. It's still very important that we do what we're doing at Austin to showcase our great Toronto artists and showcase more and, and different ones every year, but it's important to do that um, here in Toronto as well. We're going to revamp City Hall Live, not because there was anything wrong with it, but we've learned about it. And I can tell you one thing that Mike Tanner will tell you that I bark about is the fact that the hand ringers at City Hall came to him and said, oh, well, we couldn't possibly have that start until 5.30 because there might be somebody in paying their water bill or whatever, and they might be disrupted, or they might not be able to hear the person behind the counter. Well, frankly, we shouldn't have people paying water bills at counters anymore anyway, and we're trying to fix that. But the bottom line is, you know what? I think they'll get over it if we start, and I think a lot of them might decide to stay in the City Hall for an extra hour and hear a band that's playing. And it also means we were missing out on one of the most sort of fertile, I won't call them captive, but fertile markets that exist in that building, which is by the time we started these things at 5.30 or whatever, a lot of the people who work at City Hall have gone home. And I want them to stop by on their way off the elevator to sit down for a few minutes and listen to some of these great Toronto bands playing music. So we're going to revamp that and uh, take a look at that and, and, and do uh, what was successful, which is to continue to feature artists from a wide variety of musical genres, uh, emphasizing inclusivity. I'm proud to say we hosted 30 such concerts in 2016 at the City Hall, and we're going to do as many as that or more this year, but we're going to try and do them in a way that makes sure there's an opportunity for more people to hear that. It's going to be bigger, it's going to be better, we're going to take it out of City Hall itself as well, um, and partner with music organizations around the city to present music in diverse neighborhoods. And we've already done uh, events, for example, in Regent Park and at Wavelength and, and so on that are going to do that. We've also got active discussions underway which are meant to bear fruit this year in time for the busy travel season to have music in the airport. So when people get off a plane or getting on a plane, they're hearing a local uh, artist uh, play. I've seen this in many other airports and again, there was a lot of hand-wringing, oh, you know, I'm not 
sure where would they go, and all this kind of stuff that just governments seem to take great pleasure in doing hand wringing. And we're going to make it happen. I phoned the CEO of the airport myself and just said, let's speed this up. We both think this is a good idea. And we can have people, when they get off a plane, whether they're coming from somewhere else in Canada or Torontonians returning home, exposed to some of our artists. And frankly, we'll make the experience of being in the airport, which isn't always that pleasant, uh, more pleasant. And our objective is to have 150 shows over the next year at the airport. And I think this is going to provide great exposure and experience for some of these artists and also a good entertainment for people. Uh, last year, uh, 30 uh, groups took advantage of the Music in the Parks permit. Um, we're expecting more this year. And that program kicks off tomorrow at the Christie Pitts Park in celebration of Earth Day, uh, organized by One Fire Movement. So uh, we're going to um, you know, really try and expand that program and make sure everybody knows that permit, that new permit, as it were, is available. So if you add those things up in terms of us saying we're going to put a focus in 2017 on music uh, in the city itself, that's 200 opportunities for music uh, and for musicians and artists in the city that the city itself is leading. And I'm optimistic that we're going to see uh, wins as well on live music venues. I was at the Universal announcement a few days ago, and I just know from discussions that I've had in my office there are more uh, pieces of good news like that uh, to come. So. Um, I want to make sure as well that we are going to um, take advantage of our diversity here um, and make sure that we are able to sort of hear each other's music because of the belief that I have that it is so important to knitting together a city uh, that is the most diverse in the world. We're going to have to work at that. I can't, um, I can't tell private music venue owners how to program their venues. They're business people. They'll know best how to do that. But what we can do is probably show leadership at the city and venues to make sure that we are presenting the full diversity of the musical talent uh, that exists, uh, and I would just invite the private uh, venue owners to address us. Uh, point two, so point one, more music opportunities inside the city combined with a commitment to making sure we showcase the diversity of musical talent that exists. Secondly, we're going to work very hard at the City Hall on music becoming a part of the planning process. Uh, at the next council meeting, uh, Councillor Cole and myself will be moving a member's motion to have our music staff be notified of new residential developments uh, that are looking to be built near a music venue. So it means from the first minute those applications come in, as opposed to later on when the residents move in and say, well, nobody told me, you know, there was a music venue here, and this sort of thing, we're going to know from the first moment that the music venue, which is established there, and in some cases has been there for decades, is there, and that that is carefully taken into account uh, in the planning process. You know, it's been the case for years that every other division is contacted, the TTC, the Water Department, everybody's contacted about a proposal for a new development and asked for their comments, but the music office was not. Now uh, we're looking to make sure that they are, and they will have an opportunity early on. We're also looking to include music specifically and explicitly in the category of uses that are acceptable for employment lands. As you may know, in the City of Toronto, we have been very firm in saying that employment lands cannot be converted into other uses because we have to preserve and protect those lands for jobs uh, in the city. You have to have places where people can work and where things are made and where they may not be entirely compatible with residential uses. But we believe that music should be included as employment lands so that anybody who comes along won't be told, well, music isn't really employment, so you can't use the land uh, for that purpose. We, uh, so those are things we're going to work on to make sure that planning and music operate together as opposed to later on having these uh, issues. And then finally, the third priority for the year is to, um, we're going to really try hard to introduce something I alluded to earlier in my remarks, which is a Toronto Music Passport for a week during February. And this is modeled on something that's worked so well. You know, we had a restaurant and food industry that again is burgeoning and successful and a source of great pride and increasing international recognition. But it had uh, a, a kind of, what shall we call it, a slow time. Uh, in the winter uh, because people aren't just as inclined to be walking around and so forth in the winter and by creating winter delicious years ago uh, the industry and the city um, created something that's now a spectacular success that contributes hugely to um, traffic in restaurants during the winter months um, and so we're looking to do the same thing um, with uh, with uh, music uh, giving residents in toronto an opportunity to discover new music and try out new venues and bring in new business at a time of the year when it is uh, oftentimes slower we can again, cause people to go to venues in the winter, but we can help a program like this along and give it some profile. Um, and I think that they're both ideas that are, um, that are worthy of our support. So I'll just conclude by saying this. 
Um, I hope you can tell, it's not just me, I'm pushed along and in the most constructive of ways by Josh Cole and by others including John Fillion and, and there's quite a few other councillors, Gary Crawford, who are very interested in this, and by a great city staff, Dave Shake and Mike Tanner and a people of small but mighty team there. I am very committed to this and I'm not just committed to this because I believe that, as I do, that arts, uh, the arts generally and our cultural industries, including uh, music at the very top of that list, are a vital part of the definition of the soul of the city, as you've heard me say before. And they need to be a part of the soul of any really successful, livable, thriving uh, community. But it's also because this represents a hugely important industry. Somebody was telling me last night that Drake, for example, employs 80 different people in the Toronto region because he happens to be from here. One of the other benefits to him being from here beyond the reputational benefits, he's employing 80 people, I'm told, that help him with writing in the Toronto area. Well, what's that worth to us? To have 80 of the people who are aspiring and, and obviously accomplished writers actually both working on and able to say they're working on his work. And if you multiply that out times all the different artists and all the different aspects of music and music production and music uh, performance in Toronto, this is a hugely important industry um, that is, I want to be growing here and to be thriving here uh, like never before. And then finally, as I already said, it is something that in the most diverse city in the world, and, and I cite no less an authority than the BBC on that, when the new mayor of London got elected, uh, Fried Khan, it was a very, Sadiq Khan, it was a very good thing when he got elected, uh, he claimed that he was now mayor of the most diverse city in the world, and the BBC, as only they could, went and fact-checked that and came back and said, sorry about that, sir, um, you were actually not mayor of the most diverse city in the world, that's uh, Toronto. And so, but, you know, with that uh, <coughs> distinction goes a very special responsibility to find everywhere we can to bring people together and make sure we continue to live together here the way the world sees us living together, which is very successfully in celebrating differences and finding ways to bring people together, and there is nothing more important and the music to do that, which is almost the most important priority that I have, which is to make sure this great diversity binds itself together uh, in common cause and in common citizenship. So I thank you for your attention this morning. I'm looking forward to being part of these discussions with uh, some of my counterparts uh, from other cities who have, uh, we have a lot to learn from, and I'm looking forward to hearing their ideas this morning and sharing some of ours uh, with them, uh, and I appreciate your attention. Thank you very much.